We were fishing down on Tussaha today. Gonna be overcast all day it looks like. Got a hurricane in the Gulf, so winds up just a little bit here. But we're fishing with a stutter step, top water, wake bait. Good thing about overcast, a little windy. Definitely can use a top water bait all day long if you want to, but I probably won't. Probably switch back to the Rebel Minor after probably about 15 20 minutes of this. I ain't got any strikes. This is the second time this year I've been down on this one. I've caught some mighty big bass out of the other reservoir that's open to the public. So I know there's some big ones in here too, so we're going to get them today. Good thing about a wake bait, this stutter step, you can cover a lot of ground with it and kind of find the fish. And then once you find them, then you can uh, kind of slow it up just a little bit. Try some different lures. But the water's where I'm fishing it. My kayak's sitting in probably about three feet of water. I'm casting out probably about seven or eight feet out there and bringing it back. Looking for birds, bait fish. A lot of fishermen fish out in the deep water this time of year, but I'm not about all of that. I've caught my share of fish in the shallows. Bass will come into the shallows, especially on points. They'll hang around points, brush piles. On down the way, just some steep banks. It gets real deep. Right close to the bank, I'll probably put on a little deeper running crankbait to get on down in there. I'll probably stay out a little longer today. I didn't get out here until about 10 o'clock. I'll probably stay out here the rest all afternoon. Caught some mighty big fish in the middle of the day. Matter of fact, the majority of my fish I catch got size to them. In, but in the middle of the day, when it's a little hotter than this, but we'll fish around here just a little bit and see what we can get. I don't want to waste up all my battery at once, so I'm gonna. Just be on and off with this video today. Okay, paddling across the lake. Too many fishermen on that bank. Let me get over here where there's not any. Be there in about five minutes. Get a little paddling footage. Let's talk about how to catch big bass on the lake. If you're going to catch the big bass, and you're going to have to fish the big lures. So if they outsmart them, they didn't get big because they're dumb. Fish alone. Fish quiet. As little noise as possible. And there's exceptions to every rule, but if you want to catch them all, on a regular basis, you have to fish quiet, fish alone, fish big baits, and not expect to catch one every cast. I said it before, I'll say it again. I catch a lot of my big bass in the heat of the day. A day like today, you can catch them all day long if you can find them. I don't use electronics. Let them find me. So we made it to the other side. Don't take that long. Go over here and do a little fishing.
first time I fished this side of the lake. Well, gotta be good. Go head on home here pretty quick. They've probably been out here since daybreak, but just leave the big ones to me. I'll take them. I'll wait for them to come around. Oh, we're just heading in. Talking on the cell phone looks like. No one ain't even caught anything. That makes sense to me. Come fish and talk on the cell phone. Social media is not my favorite thing to talk about. There's a lot of things I'd rather be talking about in social media. Too much. If they say where I come from, BS on it. Blow me down this bank, blowing in just the right direction, keep me in close. I'm fishing in front of the kayak like I like to do. Went back in that cove and the wind was blowing against what I was trying to do, but didn't catch anything back in. Fishing with a rebel minnow, looking for big bass. Big bass like big bait. You don't catch the many fish, but the ones you catch are worth a photo. My dad and I grew up, well I grew up with fishing with my dad, we were fishing with John Boats. He ended up buying a little 14 foot dual craft with a 35 horsepower boat on it, which it was still, I don't think as good as fishing in those John Boats. Couldn't take it where you needed to get. And that was way before the day of the kayak. You can get anywhere with a kayak. I've been fishing in six inches of water before. Not hard to get in there. That's where even with your trolling motors, you they don't even go back in there. You can get where they can't go. And believe me, there are big bass back in there. Trolling motors don't like to get in real close. You can get in real close like I am right now with a kayak. Don't have to worry about running the ground, tearing up your trolling motor worried about how you're going to get back home. You can always get back home if you got a kayak and a paddle. No other way to fish for us, I'm concerned. But it keeps you in shape. When I get through fishing here, I'm going to probably have to paddle a mile and a half back against the wind. But perform my exercise. The more you get, the more you need to exercise of different sorts. Not so much with big heavy weights, but exercise with things you like to do. Fish, kayak. Sometimes I'll just go out and take the camera and forget about the fishing. But I like to record what I do where I can enjoy it later on in the winter. There's more people staying away from my videos and watching them, but that's okay. I'm not recording them for them. I'm recording them for me. There's no big deal. Sometimes when you hit a weed, it feels just like a bass. Gotta keep reeling. 
set the hook real. Blew back in this cove out of the wind, which is a good thing. I don't carry an anchor. I don't got them, but I don't carry them. time we fished with an anchor when I was growing up and my dad was when we'd go below the locking dam. We'd go in and fish, catch bass and drum, but that's the only time. Still old school. If you can't catch fish old school, then you need to learn how. It's always that next cast is going to get him. bought a fly rod. I thought I wanted to get in the fly rod fishing. I said, man, ain't nothing. Maybe at certain times of the year when the brim on the bed, but other than that, nah. You can learn all things from watching people's videos, especially these guys that been fishing a long time, but the best way to learn how to fish is to fish. Learn your lake. Learn your casting. Learn how to present your lure. Learn how to find fish in a lake without electronics. Let your lure be electronic. It'll draw them in. Find your bait fish and you'll find your bass. Look for birds. I ain't seen a lot of birds today around here. Been kind of quiet though. Sometimes you come out here and you're right under the flight pattern. Anywhere in Henry County, I don't know, you can, you're going to have a hard time getting away from the airplane sounds and train sounds. That's one reason. We're going to move out into the country. When I say country, I'm talking country. I'm not going to tell you what county, but it's rural. I told you, you may be down there catching all the fish out of my fishing spot. Got the river running down the side, and reservoirs, a lot of them private lakes. big one to fish on a little small lake after been fishing on these big uh, reservoirs. I don't fish where bass boats go. I like peaceful type of outings. Like today, you don't hear anything other than Wind. You didn't hear a lot of birds today. Wind got them shut down. I think they know that storm's coming. Fish a little more and probably pull over here and eat my lunch. Sardines and crackers. My wife won't let me eat sardines in the house. Take them fishing. One of these days, when this camera's on, we're going to get that big boy. Could be today. I catch a big boy. If the camera's not on, I'm not going to mess around and turn the camera on, that's for sure. Take a chance of losing a big fish just because you want to get it on camera? Nah. Either fish or make videos. You can't do both. Right now, I'm 
making a video. If the bass were hitting real big, I wouldn't even have this thing turned on. Just recording the day. Now look at that lure. I'm going to reel that lure right in front of the boat where you get a chance to look at it. It looks just like a fish coming at you. If I was a bass, I'd hit it every time. lunch. Still going away from the landing. Then the wind blew me down this bank. Changed baits. At the broken back five and a half inch minnow. Gives it a little more action. Floats. You just twitch it along the top if you want to in really shallow water. Get down to about three feet, you can start reeling. Right now I'm not in three feet of water. <laughs> My dad and I used to fish the Black Boy River. A place called Big Creek. Back in the 60s, all through the south, they built a lot of lock and dams along rivers and made big reservoirs all through Texas, all the way up to Georgia. And where I grew up in Alabama was a part of that. Big Creek. It used to be no, about 20 feet across, but when they put that the dam in, called Lock 7, it backed water up for miles and miles. You could just go in and fish all day. You really had to know your way around because there wasn't but one way out, and that was through the mouth of the creek. Sometimes we'd get over in some lakes that you had to put flags on trees to remember your way out because once you get back in there so far, everything begins to look the same. So we would cut strips of uh, sheets and tie them on the cypress trees that we floated back in there. Never got lost. But you could get lost in there mighty easily, especially if you weren't real familiar with it. Things begin to look alike. All trees look alike after a while. If you don't mark them. key is not loose out of your last mark before you tie off another one. You can just follow your marks back until you recognize where you are. But we were fishing with some of the same baits that I'm fishing with today. Please ask, he says, there's nothing new under the sun. What worked back in the 60s is working today. They just changed the names of them. Changed from wooden lures to plastic lures and put a big price on them. A lure like this, back when I was fishing, you could buy it for a dollar, dollar and a quarter. The biggest topwater bait would be about a dollar and a quarter for you. When you 
fishing these lakes today. You're gonna need to practice your skills that you learned a long time ago. Basic fishing skills never change. Bass or bass, whether it was bass from the 60s or bass in the 2017. <clears throat> They've got very acute senses. If you don't play to those senses, then you're not going to catch a big bass. But their senses are probably more acute than ours are. They're hearing. They can see in clear water. They don't have a very good vision in uh, shallow water. That's where we can trick them. I mean in uh, dingy water. We can trick them into hitting that noisy bait. But if it's clear, you put that shiny bait out there, if they're hungry, they'll take it. Some of them are just looking for a mid-morning snack or mid-afternoon snack. I catch most of my big ones. I think they're out looking for a snack. Well, we're back fishing again. After about a 30 minutes dilemma of getting my lure out of the tree. I think I washed on my finger. Took a thart over in Jesus' name, made that thing go away. I cut my line and got out of the boat, got my paddle out, reached up there and started knocking that lure a loose it was up about eight feet or more probably about ten feet i knocked it loose and that thing just gradually slid down i'd cut my line and it slid right down in in the water right by me if the fish had been biting i wouldn't have done that but it was a brand new lure six inch Broken back. Nearly turned the canoe the kayak over. Nearly knocked my camera in the water. I don't know if it'd have been worth it all if it all that had happened, but I found the favor of the Lord on that, that's for sure. Now we're back fishing. Now we're gonna catch those big fish. Everybody else going home. Wind died down. One thirty eight, one forty five, right in that area. It was stupid of me to throw the thing up in the tree. I wasn't watching what I was doing. usually do that. I wasn't really focused on my target. Just reared back little fly. And that's usually what happens when you just rear back little fly. Fishing in probably about three feet of water. It's a pretty good drop off right here. Right off the bank about five feet, so when I'm casting now, I'm probably casting in seven, eight feet of water. You can see that bank over there where that clay and that log is, that's a pretty good drop off. You can look at the lay of the land and tell how the water looks underneath it quite a bit. Whether it's a sharp drop off or steady, just a, like a flat or a point. That's why I like to fish the banks. You can see what you're doing. See what you know what's beneath you. Fishing in shallow water, you can see brush piles.
But we're going to get this big boy today. We didn't come out here this far not to get him. When you least expect it, that's when he's going to hit you. Just be ready to set the hook. I've caught more big bass out of the other reservoir, but I know there's a lot of big ones in here. The other reservoir is a little easier to fish. Get to the good fishing hole quickly. It's right all across the... When you put in, you can start fishing. You can do that here, but there's not that good of spots to fish. But this is what the kayak fishing is all about. Enjoying the day. Get away from social media, no phone calls, or even answer my phone for me. No text messages. I don't know how much battery I got left, but I'm gonna cut it off. If that big one gets on, maybe I'll have it on. Stage, not with the wind. There's another fork that goes way back in there, right in there. Thing goes way on back in there, about a mile or so. And then at this bridge, it goes another good half a mile beyond that bridge. Probably about a half a mile from it, so we're still about a mile from the end of this thing. Sixteen hundred acre reservoir. 